Happy three! Welcome to CNS module online. All right, this is different. This is new to you. This is new to me. And uh, in case you wonder where am I, I'm in my basement office, uh, filming this intro video. So in the next few video, you're going to see me in a this type of a manner, talking to you guys a little bit, uh, you know, giving you a little bit introductions to the lecture. And I know this has been a pretty uh, rough week last week. And trust us. All we we know your stress. All faculty know your stress, and please be patient with us. You know we are still figuring out a lot of the logistic of how to run these online classes uh, effectively and interestingly. And this is how I do it. Okay, uh, everyone else do it differently. And so today's topic, we're going to talk about opioids. All right. So without further talking, let's uh, go to the lecture. Alright guys, um, let's begin the lecture for pharmacology of anti-nociceptive agents. So there are many uh, agents that can help with pain and mainly this lecture we will be focusing on talking about um, drugs in the opioid class okay um there are other drugs that can help pains like the NSAIDs and acetaminophen you've been learning those uh you know forever so i won't be talking about those um in this particular lecture all right so uh you know this is the school closure week two from COVID 19. i know this is a very unfortunate semester um and i feel you guys okay um i completely understand the frustrations that you guys are experiencing and trust trust me everyone everyone in the pharmacy school are working their way out okay now so the learning objectives are pretty standard okay you know we'll learn about some of the pharmacology okay and uh and also some of the medicinal chemistry uh data here the structural activity relationship let me see highlight the pen okay structural activity relationship all right and other very important points here stay awake from my recording okay my recording voice sometimes could be too soothing maybe uh and that may make you feel sleepy so i don't want you to do that okay stay awake and watch the entire video please e a s c please okay um you know periodically you will be switching out from the current um powerpoint slide scene um and you will see my face okay stay tuned from that all right, uh, typical drug list, you know, for pain, we have NSAIDs, okay, uh, acetaminophen. What we will talk about in greater detail in this uh, lecture is opioids. Now, structurally, they can be classified as multicyclic, okay, there's many circles, right, <laughs> and flexible. Flexibles are things like that in an alkane train, chain that they can turn, okay, that means flexible directions. Okay, that means they can sometimes have some mixed antagonist antagonist activity, right? And we'll go touch, uh, you know, very surface type of information on lidocaine and capsaicins, all right? So, uh, what is pain? Okay, you know, pain itself, it's not something that is easily to. Um, describe yes you can ask people are you feeling pain in a scale of 1 to 10 how much pain you're having but the problem is that they are very subjective okay your pain at level is not my pain level all right for example my son he's seven years old and just a little bit of skin abrasion and he will say oh it hurts so much oh, it hurts so much well that would not be the case for you right uh you know just a little bit cut like ah oh, yeah it's hurt a little bit let's put a band-aid on right so that is very subjective and depending on different things like different factors age gender gender <laughs> guys do you think guys can ha ha handle more pain than than than, than ladies i don't know, i think ladies can handle more pain okay uh guys think about the moment your mom gives birth to you okay so they endure a lot of pain okay that 
perhaps that's before the age of epidural injections, all right? Gender can affect, okay, situations, okay, depending on situation, you may be able to tolerate more. Uh, and what else? Age, gender, uh, uh, cultural, okay? Right, culture is definitely another factor that can affect the perceptions of pain. Some culture, you know, are, you know, in a way that they, they are more uh, embedded in a way that they don't want to tell people they're suffering from pain. Okay, and also in terms of seeking medication, some culture just don't want to take uh, pain medicines. You know, they think they are not good. Okay, so that is about pain, okay, and really in terms of how we fa feel it, okay, there are specialized sensory receptors called nociceptors, okay, that's where the topic anti-nociceptive agents coming from, so basically you are, um, you know, blocking some of the sensory responses and transmissions uh, from these sensory receptors, okay, and these, you know, these receptors are activated by nauseous insults, okay, basically a cut or some type of um, aberrations or fires, okay, sometimes cold, coldness, okay, if you touch something that are really cold, for example, if you put your finger into liquid nitrogen, you will feel pain, okay, so sometimes it could be, you know, not just something cut you essentially all right and different types of pain really requires different type of treatments and uh, that is something um, you need to be uh, very paying attention to the practice uh, material that you need to you know uh, I won't talk about that here all right so let's look at this very brief pain pathway here. Now we have a hand here, all right, and then we have some uh, neuronal uh, structure and things outlined there. Now you're not responsible for memorizing the uh, anatomical positions and names of any of those, okay? Here it's just telling you, hey, how pain are being um, transferred uh, from your fingertip. Now you, uh, hold, okay, so let's begin with the process. First, you have a small needle, uh, not needle, a nail, okay, poke into your finger and you know, stimulate your nociceptors. And then there is neuronal transfer, okay, impulse, oxygen potential through uh, afferent neurons, afferent going through your uh, spinal cord and then dorsal root ganglions and then synapse bad. now here is a, a, a trick here now there are this afferent neurons there are also the afferent ne motor neurons too okay there are motor neurons but it's not showing here basically what happens is you feel the pain without going into your brain and then you immediately you know remove yourself away from the pain okay and then there is also another sensory neuron going back up to your brain all right where it tells you hey there is pain and then you know also goes into different sensory uh, cortex saying that hey this is that would tie to uh, perhaps um, emotions also okay you're afraid of something and and you're scared you you're sad okay all these cognitive activity would be limbic system okay your emotions uh, center okay and then there are uh, other receptors as well some of some are mechanical receptors the light touch they are also transferred through some of those pathway now we'll get to those fibers in the next slide okay all right see here is the uh, dorsal horn of spinal cord okay that that little chunk here hey showing you what is going on in a synaptic level all right synapse at the dorsal root and basically we have three different types of fiber now we've seen these fibers somewhere do you remember where i talk about it in your p24 i'll give you two seconds one two can you remember it in self-care right cough we talk about some sensory transmissions through those receptors to you know to your cough centers right so these are nerve fibers okay first we have c fibers amyelinated okay smaller diameter diameters slow uh, action potentials a delta fiber we have here um the second one is myelinated small diameter fast okay fast propagations and then we have a beta fiber they are also myelinated medium di diameter so these are more for pressure temperature and touch response so they are tying into the um 
the the mechanoreceptors that we're talking about, the A beta fibers. Okay, so they have different fibers, have a little bit different, um, uh, you know, relate different informations. I continue with the perceptions of the pain here. I'll give you an an example here. Uh, really, it's you know, for example, you hit your thumb with a hammer, all right? Um, and you know, so first, it, there is a sharp pain felt immediately, and the major uh, you know, sharp pain is going through your A delta fiber, okay? And at that point in time, you know, uh, you know, there are glutamate release and amper activation, so excitatory, right? Excitatory. I usually use a plus signs for excitatory, okay? So here, as a graph, there's a there's a sharp pain, right? So it, the shopping usually um, doesn't stay for very long, okay, and then it kind of goes away, dies down. But then there is a prolonged aching, right? You hit your hit your hand, okay. That shopping tells you to remove yourself from harm, and then, but unfortunately, you're injured, okay. You're injured in at that point, and then you have second pain, okay. Those are prolonged. And those are through those pains are through the C fibers. C fibers. Okay, notice fast one, okay, fast, right? With myelinated uh neurons. Tum 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 tum. Jump 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 tum 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 here jump. Okay. Uh okay, jump 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 jump. <laughs> and then C fiber is kinda of slow in a way, okay. It'll get there. It'll get there, but it's slow. But uh at the same time, you know, we are still talking about excitatory type of effect, glutamate, and perapturations, okay, and substance P, okay, is also released from the C fiber in, in response to tissue injury, okay, um, what happened is it, it, you know, that just, you know, the, the, some of the neuropeptide that are responsible for pain. All right, so here you have different types of pain. You have sharp pain, okay, you have long, dull pain, and there are different pain. So different types of pain really, uh, you know, signals that they need to be blocked by different uh, agents that can help with the pain, okay? All right, so the big show energy is a letter. I won't go into um, the detail of it here. It, you will learn it um in the um, practice lecture, basically they're talking about hey different levels of pain. You do use different, uh, you know, types of drug. Okay, usually very mild one. You are not using opioid. You know, starting from from medium type of a uh, moderate pain, you start using some opioid, and then, uh, and then up you have to use you know perhaps other opioid or even stronger opioids. Okay. All right, so causes of analgesia agents. So we have non-opioids, okay, NSAIDs for mild pain usually, and when given along, so we've all had a little mild headache or so. So we just you know take some, um, I don't know, uh, ibuprofen, okay, or acetaminophen, and opioid, okay. There are for uh, you know depends on how severe it is, okay. If you go to have a um, uh, Wisdom teeth extractions, okay. Perhaps you will be prescribed with some of the opioid uh, related um, pain medicines, okay. And then there are some of the uh, analgesic uh, adjuvant, okay. Those uh, effects are not immediately seen, okay. Some, sometimes certain antidepressants, anti anxiety agents could be used to treat some of the specialized pain, right, okay. Now, so this is question time. Let's go to another scene. All right, guys. Well, uh, hope you haven't fallen asleep, okay, during the last 10, 15 minutes or so of time. Also, I'm holding my mic here. What am I going, what am I doing with my mic here is that we're going to have a uh, little questionnaire there. All right, uh, so we are going to do something more like the who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, uh, any of you have watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Should familiar with the style. So we're going to go from some uh, dollar assigned type of a questions from one hundred dollars and goes up. Now I'm not sure if we're going to go up to a million dollar per se, but uh, we'll do. We'll work our way through uh, this entire time and. Um, 
and see what happened, all right? And uh, so you will notice here, up at the corner here, you will see a pop-up, okay, at this little bit eye icon there. So when this icon pop up, you can click it, tap on it, and you can participate in the questions in real time. All right, isn't that fun? All right, without further talking, let's go to the questions, all right. Okay, so here first we have a $100 question, and it's asking you, a prolonged aching pain is mainly associated with what? Okay, so this is some of the material that we just went through, okay, in the past couple minutes, all right? So here are the choices. First is a beta fiber, B, a delta fiber. C, C fiber, and D, all of them. All right, I like to give you all of them, but uh, in some cases, they are not all of them, okay? Uh, you just have to determine what it is, okay? If you remember what I just said in a couple slides ago, it's, this one should not be too difficult, right? This $100 questions. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Somehow I in inverted my finger here, but... You got the five seconds. Do you have a final answer? All right, uh, let's see what's the uh, final answer. The final answer is C, C fiber. Okay, I hope you get that answer. All right, so that is a quick assessment for uh, you know trying to see if you are paying attention to my videos. All right, you'll see more throughout this whole video, so don't go away. All right, let's go back to the lecture. All right, okay, I hope you have a little bit fun, okay? I certainly have fun, okay? Um, and, well, let's come back to the lecture. So I'm doing this right, just trying to not making it, try to make it a little bit more tolerable, okay? Try to space out uh, different slides so that you don't s stare at this, um, you know, PowerPoint screen and Word forever, forever and forever, forever, okay? All right, so let's continue with the opioid um, classifications, okay? Uh, here we have, uh, you know, very basic uh, type of um, the classical pharmacological actions, okay? We have agonists, okay? Uh, we, we'll go into those details over here, just some examples, okay? We have strong one, morphine, fentanyl, we have some of those weak one, codeine, right? We always talk about codeine, and it need to get metabolized, and so on and so forth, right? Antagonists, okay? Antagonists, we have naloxones, okay? Now, traxones, okay? And then we have mixed agonist antagonists, okay? Now, now boom, uh, now built in, uh, built, built to north, uh, so, Butylphenol, okay, so this are uh, difficult to say. But anyway, we have some of the mixed agonist antagonist compounds here. Now we'll look into those uh, structurally, you know, how the hell they can be both, right? All right, so they are basically uh, interacting with, uh, you know, three types of receptors, okay, but not all of these will interact with all, those, all of those, okay? Basically, there are three receptor mu, Delta and Kappa, okay, and there are subtypes, okay, there are subtypes to those, and most opioid energies are selective agents through mu receptors, mu agonist, mu agonist, highlight this, mu agonist, circle, highlight, whatever you do, uh, don't get confused with yourself. All right, a few have some selectivity for Kappa, uh, but the 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 side effect for Kappa agonist is dysphoria it makes you feel sad okay it makes you feel sad you don't want that and delta receptor appear to play some secondary role okay and hence new activity so there are some of the minions in my opinion minion uh well i give up i don't want to draw minion i don't want to make mess up <laughs> all right uh and Opioid origins. So where do we get opioids? Okay, opioids they are from uh, a plant product called opium poppy. Okay, opium poppy. They have this very 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 beautiful flowers. I like it. I just like it. Mm -hmm. All right. So they are from 
opioid flowers, not not opioid flowers. So this is other plant, and what happened is that they will form these capsules, seed capsules. Okay, seed capsules, and now people you know, basically use a knife. Use a knife. Okay, uh, scrape a line on the uh, seed capsule and the milk comes out. People collect those milk and it contains uh, morphine, codeine and more than 20 different types of alkaloid in there. Now, even in these days, the, these poppy, opium poppies are widely grown in uh, places in Turkey, uh, Turkey, India, um, and you know, people are growing these and collecting these uh, milk and uh, basically purify to get our morphines and here is the structural reference of the morphine and uh this is you can see there are many rings multi-cyclic and we'll go back we'll come back to structure okay don't worry about this uh, at this time and here this structure it's very complicated to synthesize okay uh and mother nature is doing much better job than uh organic chemists all right puppy Puppy, um, any one of you have um, little young siblings at home should know, may know this character, <laughs> Puppy. So there's, a, well, well, I have, like I said, I have a seven year old, so he's very looking forward to the second movie of this Puppy, a troll, <laughs> troll movie uh, that's supposedly to come out April 10th. He's been asking me, uh, but unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna be show in the theater. Honestly, with this COVID-19 going on. Um, but anyway, that's something that he's looking forward to. Alright, sign up. Alright, so uh, before we go into talking about uh, all the opioid compounds, okay, let's talk about some of the endogenous opioid peptides, okay. They are pain suppressing neurotransmitters. Alright, they are so called the uh, enkephalins, okay. Uh, there are some process that, that that derived from you know there there are some precursor molecules, pro enkephalins and then become can enkephalins. Uh, you don't need to know these uh, you know these you know little nitty gritty he detail here. Alright, here look at the um uh the the, the structures, okay, meth and capillin, okay. And the idea for it to be effectively, you know, perhaps relatively delta selective is that they are somewhat look like morphine. <laughs> okay, I bracket it to you. I I know it's a launching of peptide this one. This is a cyclic molecule. How could they be looking similar? Well, at least there is a ring with an OH here, right? And then there is a amine that are somewhat along in this line. All right. So that is similarity in medicinal chemistry standpoint. All right. So they act like morphine. Okay. They modulate neurotransmitter release, and they um are located with catecholamine and basically they can they have been shown to have some um, activity in suppressing uh, some pain but unfortunately these little short peptides one two three four five five peptide long they have very very short half-life so I mean you can make this in the lab okay very easily but you know putting it into your body it won't do much for you okay it need to be on, on site at the site all right, so these are some things that are called endorphins. Okay, endorphin you may have heard of it, right? So people are saying that you eat chocolate, chocolate, oh, <laughs> chocolate. Uh, you know, it makes you have happy in a way. So there have been some some uh, small studies and and reports saying that eating chocolate can enhance your the release of en endorphins. Okay. And uh, and there's another story. Uh, some people are saying that you, uh, when you do uh, physical exercise and when you run, uh, you know, you feel happy. Okay, some people feel happy from um, doing physical exercise. And the fact is that that you know it could tie into the release of endorphin, really. Okay. Um, and yep. So beta endorphin, you know, they are more of selective to um, mu receptors. Okay, uh, don't worry too much about the the um the location of where they are. Okay, don't don't just FYI here. Okay, 
and dynorphin. Okay, dynorphin. Okay, they are derived from a different type of a precursor. Again, don't need to memorize these names. It makes no no point to memorize these. Right, they are potent analgesic, but they are binding to kappa receptors. Okay, different receptors. Again, they're located uh, in parts of the brain. Um, so you know they are they are you know they the way that they distribute into the the brain they have um you know different uh, the the way that they the opioid receptor distributing to a uh, different part of the CNS uh, corresponds to um different effects okay for example in the brainstem you know we've been we've talked about okay it has some uh, functions to cough nausea vomiting pupillary diameter you know moderate respirations so those are some of the thing when we talked about uh, the cough medicines right and then in the uh, medial thalamus it made a deep pain okay and spinals okay they uh, they, they would perform some integrations of incoming sensory information and they can attenuate, okay, you can stop the painful sensation at that level, right? So epidural injections, right? So, you know, you put something in there and then, the you know, it doesn't feel so bad, you know, to give birth at that time. Um, yeah, I asked my wife when, you know, she got one epidural um, and I asked her, do you feel anything? She said, she didn't feel anything. Okay, okay, that works. Okay, that that's good. As long as you're not feeling anything terrible. Okay. Um, and if that are uh, located in hypothalamus, it affects neuro uh, endocrine secretions, okay? And there are CNS distributions, right? Remember from the GI module, they are in the GI tract. <coughs> Sorry about my cough. Right, so here we're gonna look at some of the pharmacological actions, okay? Some of those are old story, right? You are, you're quite familiar, okay? And first we have analgesia, of course, right? We're taking opioid, that is for pain, okay? What else, we, what else we, will to, we will take it? Euphoria, sedation, makes you feel happy, smiley face, okay? And makes you feel um, sleepy. Z, 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 okay, and decrease respirations. Decrease respirations. When I was in school, I always try to draw a uh, piece of lung here, and then, yeah, that's a lung, and then decrease respirations, okay. Suppress cough, reflex, we know that. Myosis, okay, um, constrictions of pupil, pupil, okay. Okay, constriction of pupil. Emesis makes you throw up, okay, GI effect, you know, makes you stall, okay, basically not moving. Cardiovascular effect and hormonal effect, uh, hormonal, different type of hormonal effect uh, that are a little bit more of a uh, minor detail in my opinion. All right, so here is a note here, note, tolerance developed to most of morphine's effect except, except myosis, constipations, and puritis. Now, puritis is a, uh, you know, basically itchy. So basically, we'll we'll come back to it. Puritis is a um, non-immunological uh, related release of histamine. Makes you makes you feel itchy. Basically, it's not a true allergy in a way. And then constipation. So that is the most uh, dose limiting type of a side effect. You know, it just can't go. It's not not good, not good at all. All right, so we are looking at some of the opioid receptor subtypes, the mu receptors. Okay, mu receptors, like I said, there's mu one and mu two. You don't need to um, memorize these chart. Okay, just in general, notice how these effects are tied into mu receptor. I, you don't need to finally differentiate one versus two okay so they have um supraspinal analgesia depression respiratory depressions euphoria physical de uh, dependence and all these so they are quite you know you can when you think about opioid effects these are the major effect there okay not <coughs> very surprising Right, and then copper. Copper have spinal analgesia and supraspinal analgesia effect as well so the Effects are quite similar, okay, are quite similar with the exceptions here is the dysphoria, okay, dysphoria. 
disorientations and hallucinations could happen as well. Now, here comes to a very interesting thing. So recently, I've been asked by a um, some someone. Okay, asked by someone. I cannot ex uh, you know disclose too much of uh, how uh, you know. Uh, naloxones and suboxones actually suboxones and can cause hallucinations so uh, I am researching some of these materials so that would be some tie that I could look into um, all right, depersonalization so basically you are feeling out of the body type of the feeling all right. no mild side effect on uh, peripheral so delta delta like I said it's a little bit minion a little minion here and it's your smile face. It enhances mute agonist. It enhances mute agonist and suppress some of the nauseous um, stimuli at the spinal cord. So the main message here, you know, is positive reinforcement. Do not does not do a lot by itself. Okay, by self activating, activating. We're not talking about activating agonist. Activating delta receptors don't do too much. All right, here comes to the key summary for different type of opioid receptors here. First here, we are looking at the mu receptors. Okay, mu receptor, main thing is analgesia and euphoria, makes you happy. Okay, that's what you want. Respiratory de depressions, decreased GI peristalsis, and, uh, you know, make you throw up, build up tolerance. Those are not good thing, okay? Copper, copper receptors, analgesia as well, and but unfortunately it will make you feel sad okay you know no one want to be sad and then we have the delta receptor where it also have analgesia effect but not much mood effect and it really what it does is tie back to the mu receptors all right so it is time for question time okay let's go to another scene all right guys welcome back to the second round of questions here i am still holding my mic here and we are coming to the 200 dollar questions again this questions it's ass assessing the past 15 20 minutes type of a material all right so let's look at the questions effect that is primarily associated with mu receptor mu receptor okay that little u here is called mu okay and first, it's hallucinations. B, dysphoria. C, tachycardia. And D, meiosis. Now, these are some of the medical terms. I'm not going to explain it here. All right, these you should be. These are should. These should be established terms that you've learned. I give you five seconds to think about it. Again, the eye icons up there. You can click on that. You can participate in this questions. Alright, first is uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I kind of reverse it again, but anyway, 5 seconds has passed. Do you have the final answer? It's not that bad. I don't think that's this one is bad at all. Alright, meiosis. Okay, meiosis is the answer. The hallucinations and dysphoria, they are mostly associated with the copper receptor as presented in the notes, and tachycardia is not something that is associated with opioid or right? bradycardia slow heart rate is what is associated with a uh, new receptor all right pretty straightforward and the idea is to see if you are paying attention at all all right so let's go back to the lecture all right so hopefully you guys are able to get the answer okay there's a pretty basic assessment um and uh, the way that i like i said the way i'm doing it is to just to touch to get your attention back okay I know retention rate okay it is very difficult to stick with the video okay I know that and then let's look at the um the actual CNS effect okay we're gonna talk about some of the and you know real hardcore pharmacology right now okay and then the main thing here is analgesia right we wouldn't be using opioid if it doesn't help us for pain okay now the brain processing uh, primarily 
uh, occurs at the spinal levels okay at the spinal levels and the pain you know when you get your finger poked okay the pain sensory goes from your afferent sensory fiber uh, you know with the opioid they are inhibited at the presynaptic and postsynaptic terminal in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord okay and in the presynaptic level here uh, opioid binds to the receptors agonist okay leading to decrease in cyclic emp activity and decrease influx of calcium so this is decreasing influx of calcium iron does it sound familiar from the very first lecture that i teach you guys in the cns module and the decrease influx of calcium ion, decrease release of neurotransmitters. Those are the pain related neurotransmitters. Right? And then post synaptic level when opioid binds to the receptors, okay? Mostly here we're talking about mu, okay, we're talking about mu, okay. Cause an increase increased efflux of uh, potassium, okay, leading to postsynaptic hyperpolarization, decreased action potential generations. Okay, stopping stopping the neuronal transmissions all right so here is a, a complicated figure if you would like to look at it you know, feel free to but i have my versions of very simple um way of describing these things all right so uh well this is look different this time okay at the spinal level opioid mechanism of actions mechanism of actions and so we have sensory info going through afferent, uh, and then what happens is that you bind to the receptors. Mostly we're talking about mu, okay, but we're not, f you know, you could bind to delta and kappa as well. The, uh, the effect binding of binding of uh, opioid to those as an agonist will lead to decrease in calcium influx, decrease neurotransmitters. Okay, what are those neurotransmitters? Glutamate, you know, substance P, okay, basically, okay. And then in the post-synaptic terminals here, you increase uh, when opioid binds to mu receptors. Here is mu receptor, increase potassium efflux, decrease action potentials. So you are not transmitting. Okay, basically you are, you know, basically the pain is being stopped. All right, and then uh, there is other effect, okay, at the uh, supraspinal level, okay, L that one was spinal level, this is above the spinal level, okay, the, uh, so in those in those places, adrenergic and serotonergic pathway from the brain stems uh, can inhibit painful sip stimulations, okay, uh, so i.e., okay, in other words, uh, 5-HT, serotonin, and uh, norepinephrine have a role in inhibiting pain. Okay, that is the main message there. And under physiological conditions, these pathways are under GABA inhibitions. So normal levels of GABA, okay, those are under normal physiological condition. This translates to normal level of GABA makes you feel pain. Okay, because it inhibit this guy and this guy that inhibit 5-HT and norepinephrine it makes you feel pain okay now opioids okay they act via mu receptor to inhibit the inhibitory actions of GABA inhibit the inhibitory actions of GABA okay say it once with me inhibit the inhibitory actions of GABA um, so you are taking away the inhibitions okay uh, i.e. you will increase the level of 5-HT uh, and norepinephrine and therefore having the effect to inhibit pain okay that tied to this first message there all right let's look at it graphically here okay this is graphical descriptions of what i just say here opioid bind to this uh gaba neuron which have mu receptors and then decrease uh the gaba level okay and then you have the more 5-HT being released okay so here under basal conditions gaba release inhibiting gaba release inhibits uh, firing of 5-HT or norepinephrine, right? And during the opioid administration, uh, giving a opioid bind to mu receptor, inhibit GABA release, okay? Inhibit effect of this on the 5-HT and any is stopped, okay? And then, so I, I won't read it f word for word, but you get the idea, okay? So these three me messages here. Normally, you know, they have 5-HT and E have you know it's good 
good. You have, if you have those, it's good for pain, good for treating pain. And GABA makes you know take away these good things, makes you feel pain. So now you have opioid to take away the GABA. Okay, inhibiting GABA. Now you then you have more 5-HT, and you, then therefore you feel more, uh, you feel better. Got it. So that is really the pharmacology. Uh, you know, action, pharmacological actions or mechanism of actions of opioid. Okay, I don't find it different, differentiate different opioids in terms of their um, effects there. Okay, there's not much of a different. They all bind to mu receptors, just uh, a little bit better or worse. All right, CNS effect. We'll continue to talk about some of the CNS effects. Uh, they have. Um, Mood alterations and rewarding property, okay, euphoria, okay, sense of well-being, you know, makes you feel happy. All right, so that it's leading to opioid abuse. Now you won't abuse something that makes you feel sad, right? You know, there's no way. You know, I, mean, I like being sad. No one's, no one say that. Everyone wants to be happy, all right? So makes you feel anything that make, can make you feel happy have a potential to get you hooked. Right. All right. So they are the the reasons for these you know hooking mechanisms. Okay, is that they have interactions. It's believed that they have interactions with the dopamine. Okay, uh, between opioid and dopamine, and what dopamine feed in in the nucleus accumbens and it feed to the reward centers. Okay, you know sense of well being. So, mu and delta agonists are rewarding, you know, happy phase again, and copper agonists are and selective mu antagonists. Okay, antagonists here. We're finally talking about antagonists. Makes you feel crappy, and produce every aversive effect. Makes you feel sad. All right. I think it's quite straightforward in a way. These informations. Um, they have some sedative. Uh, you know. Property okay, but they're not technically a sedative hypnotic in terms of pharmacological definitions. There, they will make you feel drowsy, make you feel happy, uh, not happy, heavy, heaviness, and difficult to concentrate. So those are the uh, common thing. Uh, even though you will fall to fall asleep, but they are not the you know, typical hypnotic in a way. Okay, so um. It's more happen, you know, to people that are old or have other conditions or potentially taking other CNS depressants. Okay, those will enhance the, you know, make sure you feel even more sleepy. Respiratory effect. Okay, respiratory respiratory de depressions, big rate limiting steps. Okay, and uh, they have a direct effect on respiratory center in the medulla. Okay, basically the the. Decreasing neuronal uh, conditions, and you know, uh, you know, depress all phase of respirations. You know, you b breathe a little bit, uh, you know, more slower. Breathe shallower. Tidal exchange. You you know, so you're just not breathing much. Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. At this time, at this time of the year, if you're not breathing very deep, and that could be in indicative of this guy. Yeah, along with other symptoms. So, okay, so you want to breathe very well right now. All right, so they uh, are compound. These effects are additive to when you are using other uh, agents such as a anesthetics, tranquilizers, alcohol. Big thing, okay, alcohol. Big thing. Yeah, I I guess normal people won't get you know anesthetic tranquilizers that easily, but alcohol and sedative hypnotic, those are the big things. So. Uh, it will further depress, and that could be very serious death. We're talking about death from opioid, you know, almost always due to respiratory depressions. Okay. And then we have, you know, the, the good side of depressing some of the respiratory type of a uh, uh, center, or no, is the cough suppression, so we've talked about it, okay, antitussive, codeine, hydrocodones, uh, pupillary constrictions, hallmark to opioid overdose, hallmark to opioid overdose. Um, so I don't know if you've watched any other, any medical type of a TV shows, Grey's Anatomy, I don't know, uh, those are older things. Anyway, so, you, you know, people look at you, you know, people would, would depict a, a scene where you 
We can open the eye. Okay, we open the eyelid. You know, when someone unconscious and see how their pupil doing. You know, that could be you know indicative of their diet. They they you know other thing many things, but that is one thing they could be looking at. All right. Um, mouses. Nausea, vomiting. <laughs> this is very general. Name one drug that doesn't cause you feel nausea and vomiting. It's hard, right? Most drugs cause you not feeling nauseated in a way, but particularly with opioid, they directly stimulate the chemoreceptor triggers on the CTZ in the area of this uh, prostrema activating area prostrema and activating the vomiting center. Where is it? Here is the area prostrema, that little guy here. Um, and also they have, you know, they will cause you muscle rigidity and those are mostly commonly seen with fentanyl. Most commonly seen with fentanyl. Now don't worry about these large doughs and all these, okay? That's um, not that, um, not that crucial in a way. Like CV effect, cardiovascular, okay, elicit a decrease in central sympathetic tone, causing vasodilation of aesthetic hypertension. So those are all common things can be associated with opioid, okay. Uh, you know, it also slow down your um, uh, heart rate, bradycardia, by stimulating central vagal nuclei, right. The effect, you know, depend. it could be a little bit minimal, but, uh, you know, in a way. Histamine release. Okay, this one is uh it's important in my opinion because this IV injections of opioid can cause non-immunologic release of histamine from mast cells. Okay, so it's it's it it's strange. Okay, it's strange. We know that it's probably tied to calcium ion influx, uh, but uh the the exact mechanism here is not quite sure. Okay, non-immune release okay uh that would lead to um site redness hive itching and so not a true allergy not a true allergy we're talking about and it's not about uh having ige that it's doing its job okay is remember immunology from last year okay it's not a ige mediated type of uh hypersensitivity okay so um, smooth muscle effect, we are mostly talking about uh, GI here, GI constipations. Okay, constipation is the main thing. Delay gastric emptying, uh, you know, chronically you need to have some other help. Uh, chronically using opioid would need laxative, stool softener to help with constipation. So, right? Those could be uh, uh, prescriptions or over-the-counter. Uh, good thing is they do not cross the BBB, okay? That is some recap from your um, GI module from last year. Biliary, uh, biliary system, so opioid can cause the constriction of sphincter of, uh, sphincter of OD, okay, sphincter of OD, that little guy here. Right, so it will increase the, uh, you know, pressures in the common bowel duct can precipitate exacerbate, uh, by biliary colic or pancreatitis. Okay, uh, for in terms of urinary tract, can cause urinary tract in, uh, uh, urinary retention. Effect on pregnancy and neolate. Okay, the opioid can cross the placenta. Okay, that is the main thing. Now, although they don't have teratogenic effects, so that is you know a little bit good side of it but it can develop dependency in utero okay um, and then newborns will need to go through uh, withdrawal so um, opioid can be given uh, you know given during labor will can cause respiratory depressions in the baby so that it's that dangerous thing tolerance repeat use okay you use it for a long time use it all the time can build up tolerance and these color tolerance can be crossing with other opioids that are similar in structure really and you'll see it in in, in, a, in a very short amount of time like so they develop more rapidly for analgesia respiratory depressions euphoria so soon out you know after a while you don't feel as happy uh not so much with constipation pyrite myosis basically they don't really go away here um here are just some of the the graph showing you the the tolerance there of uh, just you know visually showing you how you need to to increase the dose to get the same effect there, dose response curve, okay? 
Independence. Okay, so they will uh have the um physical dependence there. Um, the the um some of the interesting things about uh opioid dependence is that they are uh essentially they are not that you can stop it very abruptly. Basically, you know, some drugs, CNS drug, if you depending on it, you stop it, stop it abruptly. It can be life threatening. Opioid one is one of those things that you can go, you can do cold turkey, go, you can do cold cold turkey, and uh, when you do cold turkey for someone that are depending on um opioid, they will feel very 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 crappy, very very bad withdrawal symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, goose flashes, madrasas, drug seeking, uh, but they won't die. They won't die from that. Okay, that is one of those uh strange things about opioid dependence. And uh, you probably never watched those movies, but when when I was a kid, I, uh, I watched you know some of the Chinese movie or TV shows in the old days. We're talking about you know you know century century half ago type of uh you know depict those era and. Uh, the there are those rich rich kids, you know, that that abuse on opium. Okay, basically the crude compound from opioid, and they got addicted, and then uh, their father locked them up in a room, and they tried them to ring him, ring the the kid off from opium, and they always show these type of uh, uh you know very bad withdrawal symptoms, and they never die. Okay, so that is one interesting trivial thing that you learn from me. Okay. So, uh, dependence is not the same as addiction. So, all right, interactions here. Uh, they can interact with phenothiazines, amyl you know, inhibitor, tricyclic antidepressant. Basically, they are increasing the uh, depressant uh, effect. Okay. Um, they can also uh small dose of amphetamine, antihistamine, and hydrazine can affect the morphine analgesia effect. Why is that? Remember, okay, that's in the supraspinal level in a way. Okay, let's go to question time. It's about that time I talked up too long, already. All right. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Come, well, stay awake. Stay awake. Okay, I know it's getting. You know, kind of hypnotic in my way. In a way, okay, my voice being hypnotic. Okay, so this is three hundred dollar questions. There. All right, let's look at the questions. At the spinal level, presynaptic terminal. Okay, the spinal pre, pre at the spinal level, presynaptic level. Okay, opioid. Okay, what does it do? Opioid. Okay, increase calcium influx, increase glutamate release, decrease substance P. Or all of the above. So this one is asking you the mechanism of actions of opioid at the um, spinal level, okay, and particularly at the presynaptic neurons. What does it do? All right. So these are the choices, and I'll give you five seconds to think about it. Now these are again not something that is difficult. One, two, three, four, five. All right, you have a final answer. All right, you can flip through your notes or scroll your slide, whatever you, which way you want. And the final answer is C. Decrease substance P. Is okay. Substance P. Substance P uh, is one of those uh, pain-associated neuropeptides. Okay, and the idea is to uh, decrease those uh, being released at that level, and therefore they're not eliciting. Eliciting some of the pain sensations um, associated with it. All right. Okay. So let's go back to the lecture. All right. Okay. Okay. Come back from the little small game, little long small game here. Uh, let's now really start to talk about some of the drug. Okay. We've go through all of the um, the mechanism of actions, effect on different systems inside your body. Now we're moving into some of the selected agents within the opioid group, and we'll also look at the medicinal chemistry side of the um these group of compound. 
Like first, we're going to look at is morphine. Okay, morphine is really the classical compound that when we whenever we talk about opium, they absorbed、uh, rapidly, widely distributed, and they rapidly clear from plasma. Now the hydrophilicity of morphine. Okay, there are hydrophilicity groups. Okay, makes it cross the you know make it a little bit more difficult to cross the burping barrier. Okay, the and the penetration is very slow. Right, it's not that much. Okay, when you're giving Like like a gram, only point zero two grams. It's going in there, so it's it's uh it's very little in a in a in a sense. Now, why do I talk about heroin? It's just for comparison. Okay, this is schedule one, schedule one compound. Okay, uh, you never seen it in. You shouldn't see it in anywhere in your life. Okay, heroin and uh, in compared to morphine, structurally here we have. Uh, a compound that is、uh, so called the diacetylmorphine. So they have acetyl group there compared to morphine. They are more potent than morphine analgesic. Okay.、Uh, what happened is that they are liposoluble and cross rubbing barrier faster. So it's that simple. So the first invented or made by German Bayer. Okay, heroin. Okay.、Um, uh, it was a drug at some point, right?、Um, but They are what it says here. Can you see it? The cheapest and specific for the relief of cough. <laughs> what day is that? I I don't know what year is that. Um, anyhow, but uh, I got cut off. The picture got cut off a little bit sometime in December. Uh, it was sold in uh, this is a in New York. All right, so uh, that. It's an old day that will never come back again. Like,、uh, an extreme euphoria when it's administered IV. It goes right in.、Uh, what happened? Once it goes past the blood-brain barrier, it will metabolize into morphine. The,、uh, you know, basically taking off the acetyl group, and then you know, you get mo your morphine. All right. So that's for heroin. Um, oxycodone. Oxycodone is a semi-synthetic narcotic analgesia. Semi-synthetic. Okay, we did something to it using、uh, raw raw material from the nature. They are special because they absorb orally, and about sixty to seventy eighty seven percent reaching the plasma, and they are metabolized metabolized by two D six into oxymorphone. All right, and so you have active metabolite there, and you have high affinity for. Um, for mu and kappa receptors. All right, moving on to oxycodone、um, CR or CR. Oh, sorry, I moved a、uh, accidentally moved the slide there. And it was introduced in 1996. So for you guys, it's a long time ago. For me, it doesn't feel that long ago, honestly. As a pure oxycodone inside a polymer matrix that allowed for control release. So if abuser crushed the tab, they destroy the matrix and disable the control release. And these individual can then swallow, okay, and snort or inject, okay, to get this hydrotropic effect. They are very attractive to an addict due to high level of oxycodone in a single tap,、uh, and then there is no non-narcotic analgesia, so they're they're very pure in a, in a in a sense. And、um, when I was working or interning in a pharmacy,、uh, one of the tap,、uh, well, we're talking about a long time ago. We're talking about oh gosh, like more than ten years ago when I was interning in a pharmacy,、um, and. They uh one of the tag told me, uh the the black market price for one pill of these oxycontin is one hundred dollars, yep one hundred U S dollars we're talking about, um, um yeah, I don't know how true is that the the tag told me um I don't know if the price has went up these days, but uh that's why,、uh, you know people potentially could you know like to rob um pharmacy for these things. Okay, so uh, you know what can we do to improve temper resistance, uh, you know, you know to improve, you know, in a way that to、uh, deter 
some of the abuse potential for oxycodone. Well, so long story short is that there has been many, uh, you know, different ways incorporated into, uh, you know, in in the effort. Some some of the new formulations, you know, try to uh, develop some um, small beads filled with uh, naloxones. And if those formulas are, you know, injected, uh, you know, swallow as a whole, uh, those um, things won't be really... Um, you know, affecting you in in a way the the antagonists. But if they're crushed, those antagonists are acutely react and counteract the effect of oxycodone, making them have a withdrawal symptoms. So there, so this was one way to deter abuse potential. Now, those um, there has been some really uh strong effort into developing a a new type of a temper resistant control release uh, oxycodone as of 2019 i couldn't find any new information but last year they they didn't like it fda vote uh, against approval so what this gel capsule uh, supposedly do is having a proprietary control release technology that is resistant to to crush okay if you crush it it will and the entire thing would would just not be you know in its normal form um unfortunately that is rejected for the third time last year so uh they were saying benefit of the drug did not outweigh the risk so that's all they said um we'll see if there's new any type of a new form coming up in the in the in the new uh new, in the new ages okay so that's this is uh fyi okay fyi here don't don't worry about memorizing these detail all right, so we have codeine. Um, codeine is uh, a uh, we we are always we are all very familiar with it. So convert to morphine with two D six. Okay, a little bit mild symptoms, less respiratory depression, less dependence. Uh, you don't get happy out of it. Um, and you know we know that it's used as antidepressive, and really the um the the catch of it is depending on if what kind of a gene you have okay genetic polymorphisms in 2d6 uh and you know some people do not get benefit from its analgesia effect okay and hydrocodone okay a synthetic drug that is similar structure to codeine they're a little bit more potent a little bit more abuse potentials there okay uh the, not much note in terms of that uh, additional notes in in this all right. Finally, we're getting into some of the um, structural activity and relationship. I think this is the uh, part of the the part of this chapter that got me most excited. Um, I'm weird. All right. So this is a pretty busy slide here, and we'll walk through it slowly. Uh, you know, just uh, follow my um, pencil here. So we'll follow my pencil here. But anyway, first we will look at the. Um, the morphine here all right so the morphine here i bracketed this uh group this phenol group here let the sentence here is essential or greatly enhanced activity so we really need this this part of the the entire structure here okay so this is the core component here and then the second core component here, I have a gray bracket here, is the tertiary amine. Okay, here is a tertiary amine. It's usually needed for good activity. Okay, that is the second rule of this um, this structure. Okay, so again, what does it resemble? It resembles the enkephalin peptide that I pointed out earlier on, right? So those two are the main thing. And substitutions with larger i.e. more carbon groups will, will transform it into an antagonist. Ooh, ooh. All right, so we'll look at those later on. All right, so here is the morphins, and then we have different, um, you know, relationship between different compound. They can all somewhat related in a way on, uh, in a way. Okay, so we talked about heroin. Okay, uh, acidic and hydrate. Uh, well. well Okay, you don't. We don't want to make it, <laughs> but but if you treat it with acidic anhydride, you can get heroin, and then it will metabolize back to morphine. Don't say, um, okay, don't don't remember this part. Yeah, you don't need to worry about this. <laughs> okay, codeine. Okay, codeine when it metabolized by two D six turn into morphine. When codeine are synthetically modif 
modified. Okay, we're talking about having this ketone group. Remember, we talked about it in cough lecture. Ketone group at position six increase activity. Okay, so synthetic modifications, you get hydrocodone. All right, so here is the the relationship here, and then you can have hydromorphone as well. So okay, so hydro hydromorphone basically is just a um a compound with a morphine, but then it changed to a ketone group at six position six. So it's more potent than morphine. So it, it is a modification step here from morphine to hydromorphone. All right. Now we have a, a little bit side kick here, which is uh, oxycodone. So oxycodone here, it what are the main difference compared to the rest of them? It first, you know, think about it. It is a pill, okay, orally active. So what happened is at this position fourteen, okay, position fourteen. I circled it here, or I pointed here with the arrow. Having a hydroxyl group at position fourteen increase oral availability. Oh wow! Okay, so that's why we can take it as a pill. Okay, so the relationship between oxycodone and oxymorphone, it's it's like codeine to morphine. Okay, basically you have a metabolism through two D six trans, you know, and you transforming this O methyl to become an OH. Right, so this is um, there's a CH three there. Okay, so this is the relationship between different type of a cyclic, uh, opioid multi-cyclic opioid agonist structure. So this entire page is agonist. Okay, uh, be sure to know some of these relationship between each one of those, and definitely those this center message, be able to understand it. Just don't memorize the statement purely. You understand how these statements reflect. On the structure, like always. Okay, if you got those questions in my first exams, that is the same idea applied. Okay. Now looking at the um, what is it? This is the antagonist. Okay, notice the notice the the title antagonist structures. All right, we talk about it. Tryptamine is usually good. Needed for good activity and substitution with larger, i.e., more carbon groups will transform into an antagonist. Okay, okay. So here is the comparison: morphine, and we have naloxones. Okay, it is a long chain. Ah, uh, now traxones. We got a triangle here. All right. So those are all mu antagonists. The rest of it is the same. You notice it? Well, a little bit different here. We have a ketone here, but the rest of it it's very. Much the same, and just by elongating that tertiary amine group, make it bulkier, you get an antagonist. All right, nature is that interesting. Okay. Uh, and okay, so here we have a a a arbor, arbor compound here, buprenorphine, buprenorphine. So it is a mixed agonist antagonist. Hmm. Okay. Now you know. First, look at this a little bit. More uh tertiary amine tail here, so it is a bulky thing. Okay, just like naltrexone. So this is an you know, antagonist activity. It's partially, it's given by this group here, but uh at the position seven here, it's this you know can overcome the antagonist activity by having a hydrogen group at position seven and a lipophilic hydro. Uh, carbon substitution, so it makes it cross the bubbling barrier. So it ended up you have this uh, buprenorphine plus, uh, you know now loxones. Basically, you have suboxone in place. Oh, sorry. Okay. So buprenorphine is a mixed agonist antagonist. Okay. Remember, the antagonist come from this tail, and the agonist effect is coming from this position seven. This little big bulky thing there. Okay, so I think that is very interesting. All right, moving along, we have uh some of the other compounds that are synthetic. We still consider opioid type of group. We have um mepiridine. It is a synthetic mu agonist. Okay, um, there are about ten percent of morphine activity. Uh, they can stimulate non-allergic release of histamine as well. Okay. Good thing is no inhibition of GI motility and and cough, and metabolized to uh no, uh, no. 
and metabolize. Metabolize to norepinephrine. Like the metabolism, the metabolized compound of meperidine basically have a strong, uh, st is a strong st stimulant and have convulsant effect. So they're not using very much anymore. So here it's just a a a side note of it. Um, fentanyl. Okay, big thing. Fentanyl has been a big thing. Big thing on news. Everyone knows about fentanyl now these days. Is this synthetic mu agonist? They are fifty to a hundred times. 50 to 100 times uh, more potent than morphine. Okay, really the big guy here, big gun here. Highly lipophilic, quickly cross in and out of blink barrier. So they're rapid onset, short action, short durations. Not only active due to extensive metabolized by 3A4 and inactive metabolite. So I've heard of a story, um, and basically that is related to the transdermal fentanyl patch. Right, so uh, I don't know who told me this. Really, what happened is I think there's an old man, and you know they he's been getting transdermal patch, uh, you know fentanyl, transdermal transdermal patch, and they he walk into a pharmacy complaining, hey, this is this thing is not working for me, and then the pharmacist asked him how are you using this, and then the the the, the guy old guy saying oh well, I'm chewing it, uh oh <laughs> you're chewing it okay so um. Extensively metabolized three A four. So if you are chewing it, chances are you're not getting any of those. All right. So you need the patch. You need to apply, uh, you know, on top of your skin. Use it for chronic melanin pain. Okay, and also giving to people that are who are tolerant to other opioid. So here are some of the uh, graphical illustrations of how these uh, dermal patch work. Uh, basically, uh, just FYI, okay, you don't need to memorize any of those details in this graph. Methadone, All right? Methadone is something that you want to pay uh, special attention, okay? When Dr. Franco talk about it, okay? That's my um, golden word. You need to really pay special attention of methadone. All right, methadone has a long duration of actions for analgesia. They have because they have multiple active metabolites and also uh, and then some also have long half life. So you have a array of compound that uh, can be help can help with uh, pain. Uh, used to treat heroin withdrawal and pain. Okay, heroin withdrawal and pain. Okay, um, they have activity at multiple receptors. Uh, Mu, kappa, delta, agonist, but the greatest is at the mu receptors. Um, they can also have you know some of the uh, you know SSRI, SNRI type of effect there. Uh, they can also have an MMDA antagonist, so they have a mix type of uh, pharmacological actions there. Uh, cause less um, sedations, euphoria. Uh, and we throw out more, throw out more, uh, less psychological dependent. That's why it is used. We're using one of a opioid-like compound to treat a opioid, you know, addiction. So less of the two evil in a way. All right. So those are the uh, the compound properties. And let's look at the structural activity relationship again. All right. So these are called so called the flexible mu agonist. Okay, flexible in nature, so they can twist, they can adjust its conformations to fit into a mu receptor in a way that is a little bit different than the multicyclic one. So, uh, so that that could be leading to why some of those are stronger, and because they can fit. Okay, but they can twist. They can twist this bond and all those. At this time, this um, OH group is not needed. Okay, notice that when I circle these compounds, none of them have a OH group in that phenyl ring. So OH group are not um, are not needed in a way. Okay, and so. The the second side of it, the second uh structure that are mimicking morphine here is the one that I circled in gray. So here is the uh you know chair structure here. So the you all have a six member ring here in a way. So here is a chair structure. This is flattened molecule. So this this um gray circle is resembling to uh morphine. 
on it. They both they all have it. Now methadone is a little bit strange. Now if you don't see a pure six member ring uh, with a nitrogen, you know, tertiary amine there. But what happened is that being um, the uh, here the structure shows you a iron dipole bond here. So basically, this interactions between the oxygen group and the hydrogen group here can almost virtually form something almost look like a uh, six member ring and that formations resemble what is on morphine right so methadone it's a strange uh, by nature strange pharmacologically you know very complicated it could be and uh, even the usage of it okay the, the dosing the usage of it there are a lot of story behind methadone so uh, really pay attention to it and then we have some other um, other miscellaneous type of agents I would say trimetal they are ma uh, marketed as racemic mixtures uh, so what these uh, you know miscellaneous type of agent what it does you know they don't directly do anything to the mu receptor instead here this one um, they this one they do uh, inhibit norepinephrine reuptake and then inhibit uh, serotonin reuptake alright so this that is how uh, these compounds, uh, the presence of these compounds can help with uh, the supraspinal type of uh, pain perception or pain processing. Now, even though they're not the primary, but it helps, if anything would help. They metabolize by 2D6, okay. Now, metabolites actually become a mu receptor agonist, okay. So, so you know, depending on your... Um, Again, on your genetic information, genetic polymorphism, you get different effects. All right, so moving on to tepanidol. Tepanidol here is a mu receptor agonist, and they have um, also selective re selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. The market has one S two one R two R isomer, and the metabolites are inactive. All right, so they have uh, interactions with MAOIs. Okay, increasing circulating. Uh, no prenephrine and that can lead to hypertensive crises. All right, so you need some washout period uh, for tepanidol. All right, so it is question time again. All right, guys, come back. Okay, we just look at a lot of uh, structural things. We've been getting into individual opioid products. So I'm going to ask you one product here in this uh, $500 question. Okay, again, you can participate. You may have to scroll down a little bit to get to all of the poll questions, okay? To the, to the lower one. And the question is fentanyl is, okay, basically asking the properties of fentanyl. A, weaker than morphine. B, stronger than morphine. C, orally active. And D, a multi cyclic opioid. So if you've been paying attention to me, paying attention to the story that I just told you, this should be a easy peasy lemon squeezy, like my son said. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> anyway, uh, and so uh, I'll give you five seconds to think about it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what is it? Okay, you that have a little bit structural property to tie into it, right? So uh, it is B, stronger than morphine. So according to my notes, it's 50 to 100 times stronger than morphine. All right, so it is not only active, and uh, again, it is not a multi-cyclic opioid. Okay, look at look back to the sort of structure. It you know basically just a small ring, and, be, and it's flexible, basically a, a flexible opioid product. All right, all right. Let's go back to the lecture and finishing up the remaining slides. All right. All right, come back. How much money have you won? <laughs> no, no, you're not winning anything. I'm not giving you anything. I can't, okay? There's so many of you. Not even one of you, sorry. But it is just a game. I think I think it's fun. Don't you think so? Um Okay. So the what now here we're just talking about some very brief uh message here. You uh I don't want to uh 
basically store any more time this is becoming a quite long lecture in my opinion um and this NSAID you can read about those uh it is really just a recap of many things that you've been learning throughout the years okay NSAID MAOI uh no MAO review uh mechanism of path actions review okay reverse split inhibit cos1 cos2 right the pathway arachidonic acid pathway um I feel like, you know, for you guys, it's been ages since you learned this. Uh, for me, it doesn't seem to be that long time ago. Topical. Topical, we're talking about, uh, you know, some of the common agents, lidocaine. Lidocaine, you know, basically uh, anesthetic, block, fast, voltage-gated, sodium channel, prevent depolarizations, prevent signal propagations. Very straightforward. Now, capsaicins is a little, um, you know, strange. Capsaicins is a natural compound that is from chili peppers. And what happened is that they have uh, effect, uh, you know, they have effect on this TRPV1, okay, and as a agonist. So, this is a very long name, and uh, the they are expressed on those susceptive nerve fibers in the skin and what happened is that initially when, when you apply capsaicin it give you a you know sharp pain type of a sensations right anyone have you you know any of you that prepare pepper uh, for your for your lunch or dinner or anything you you know like sometimes the strong pepper the, those compounds get on your your skin uh, get on your finger it's burning and you you don't want to touch your face with that 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 finger because you will burn your eyelid and things like that um but the strange thing is you know it will, over to time it will give you some pain relief okay it is thought to be down regulating some of these um trpv um expressions on these endings so you are taking off some of those receptors and you're not feeling as much anymore Adjuvants, okay, so adjuvants therapies, they basically they are used for optimized patient comfort. Uh, and overall, here is to help, okay, provide independent analgesia that is specific for the pain. So usually they work by a little bit different mechanisms, okay. Um, and here is the table rundown for those. Um, I'm not asking you to memorize these like always. I don't. I hate people to ask people memorize table. Um, here is for FYI, at least for me. Again, FYI. All right. So, uh, coming to the last round of questions. Let's go. Okay, coming to the last questions for this particular opioid lecture. Here we have the one thousand dollar questions. And just you know, being a summing up to uh, of the whole lecture. Now this one, it's a little bit more difficult in my opinion because we're getting to the safe line, right? It's a uh, one thousand dollars here, and this require a little bit of thinking. They're not as straightforward in my opinion. All right, structurally speaking, oxymorphone is. Hmm. All right, so there's a structure earlier on. I show you uh, oxymorphone. Okay, think about its property, uh, and let's what see what are the choices here. Stronger than oxycodone, a metabolite of morphine, not orally active. Indeed, all of the both. All right, so uh, you know, think of it. It shouldn't be a too difficult. Now we didn't talk about oxymorphone uh, as a standalone object in our slide, but you know it's mentioned in the uh, structures, and there is some structural relationship between one and each other. Okay, that's where you would think about the answer, or to look about, look for the answer. I right, give you five seconds. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so do you have a final answer? All right, so let's look at the final answer, which is B, metabolite of oxycodone. All right, see, so remember the relationship of uh, metabolizing that functional group. Okay, metabolizing, you know, basically it's almost like uh, the codeine going to uh, morphine and the um, 
what is it, the oxycodone going to uh, oxymorphone. All right. So this is some of the potential uh, idea that you're going to encounter in the exam. Now at this point, we are working under the assumption that this third exam would be normal. Go back to campus. Uh, we don't know. No one knows what's going to happen. So stay tuned for all the changes. Okay. And you know when the time comes, I'll be very clear of what I expect on my exam. So don't worry. All right. So this this particular top uh, this questions wrap up the opioid topic, and uh, the next topic we are going to look at cannabis. Okay. I know you are getting cannabis in integrative uh, health medicine and health, but let's look at the pharmacology side of the story and some of the history of cannabis. Alright, and without further talking, and I'll see you next time.